Hello, hello, cadet and concert band. This is Mr. Dragon. I know you can't see me, uh, but this is video one uh, of the yellow packet assignment. I'm going to take you through the first assignment that I want you to do on this. There'll be a second video later with the other assignment. So this is uh, not a sit down and finish the whole thing in one setting uh, sort of thing. It's a uh, kind of a long term project. So here's the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna talk through. Um, I want to point out that I am currently using the treble clef C instruments packet. That means that what I'm using is what a flute player, oboe player, or percussionist would be using. So yours may look different. Yours may be a treble clef B flat instrument for a clarinet, a trumpet, or a tenor. Maybe a major scales bass clef instrument for trombone, baritone, or tuba. Maybe a treble clef F instrument if you're playing horn, and treble clef E flat if you're alto saxophone. Um, so they're all a little bit different. I'm going to try to make those differences clear for you when, uh, when I'm working on this. The first part of the assignment, very easy. You're going to number the first eight notes of the scale, one through eight. You might choose to do that underneath the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or above the notes. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. I would like you to do this as well on note number eight, put in parentheses one. Why? Well, the first note of this scale, for example, is a C. The eight, note number eight, or scale degree eight, is also a C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. There are really only seven different pitch names in this scale, and this one we start over again. So I might refer to this note sometimes as eight or sometimes as one. Uh, you need to know it as both. Okay, just going through and numbering the rest of the scales in the packet. I'll do that right along with you. Make sure that your numbers are easy to read and uh, lined up with the note they actually go to. The whole point of doing this, I'm not interested in wasting time and I assume you're not either. The whole point of doing this is so that we can quickly reference the scale degree or number uh, for the notes. And I can say, all right, go to line six. I want you to play note number seven. And you don't have to do a lot of counting or, you know, Wh which one is it? No, just go right to it. It's lined up, it's easy to see. I'm going to do that on the back as well. And again, I don't care if you do above the notes or below the notes. Just make it easy and clear for you. You're the one that has to read this. I'm going to grade it by making sure that you did it, but I'm not going to grade you on, you know, do you have neat handwriting? I certainly don't. Um, I am going to grade you on, did you do it? Have you made this document functional for you? That's what I'm interested in is that you are doing this not just to jump through the hoops like some kind of a circus animal and do what the teacher tells you to do, but turning this document into something that can make sense to you and be useful to you as you grow as a musician. That's the whole point. All right, we've numbered all of the scale degrees. First eight notes, one through eight. Easy enough. If you haven't finished yet, hit pause and then uh, unpause when you're done with that because I'm going to go right on to the next thing because I don't need to wait for you like I would in class. You can pause as you need to. Take a look with me at the next page. This is a completely different way that the major scales are written out. Let's talk about the C scale, your C scale. So here's where I'll reference something for you. We're going to go uh, we're going to kind of go be turning back and forth. This is treble clef C instruments. We're going to be talking about your line one. If you're a clarinet, trumpet, or tenor sax, we're talking about line three for you. That's the one that actually starts on a C, right? So this is what we're going to be talking about if you're a clarinet, trumpet, or, uh, or tenor. If you're a trombone player or a um, tuba player, baritone player, we're on line one for you as well because that starts on a C. That's the name of the note that it starts on. If you're a horn player, we're talking about line number two because that starts on a C. 
And if you are an alto sax player, yours is line number four, because that actually starts on a C. So we're talking about uh, four different scales almost in a way, but depending on what you, it doesn't matter what you play, we're talking about the scale for you that starts on the note C and doesn't have anything in the key signature, okay? So again, if you're uh, a bass clef uh, person or a flute, oboe, or percussion, that's your line one. If you are a clarinet or a trumpet, it's your line three. If you're a horn, it's your line. Uh, I'm gonna go back con to continue using the flute, oboe, percussion page, but now you're on yours. So if you look, the notes in that scale uh, on, this, on this page kind of looks like a weird word find. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so on. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So reading the actual notes on the staff is of course what we want, but some of you might find it easier when we play a scale, if I say play your C scale, to play this exactly as it is. Where it really starts to get useful as we move into the other scales and the next step of what we're going to do. Next, would you find the scale that has one flat in the key signature and starts on the note F for you. Not talking about concert things right now. Con the concert, no, not the concert F, your F. Again, if you're a flute, oboe, percussion, uh, trombone, baritone, or tuba player, it's gonna be your line two. That's the line for you that starts with an F and has one flat in the key signature. If you're a clarinet, Trumpet, tenor sax, that's your line four. That's the one that starts on, a, on an F and has a flat in the key signature. If you're an alto saxophone, it's your line five. That's the one that starts on an F and has a flat in the key signature. And if you're a horn player, it's your line three because that's the one that starts on an F with your flat in the key signature. And now that you should be on yours, other stuff should be the same. I'm gonna be on the treble clef page, so please don't get confused. So we're on the F scale. We're gonna look at this chart and see F, G, A, B flat. There's one flat in the key signature. And it's on the B line, say B flat. This affects all Bs, whether they are on this line, below the staff, or above the staff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write a flat right in front of those B flats and I'm gonna find where they show up again, right there, and I'm gonna put a flat right there in front of those. Now, depending on your uh, tendencies, you might be someone who looks at this scale. I'm looking at you, flutes, oboes, percussionists, trombones, baritones, and tubas, and might want to put in a reminder up to you of an E natural on note number seven. If you need that reminder, great. You don't have to. Again, we double check here. One flat in the key signature tells us that it's this B flat. We could play this. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, up and back down. Or we could read the actual notes. Next, we're going to add another flat to the key signature. All you gotta do is move down to the next scale on the list. So, if you're a flute, oboe, percussionist, trombone, baritone, or tuba, our C instrument friends, we're now gonna be on line three. This is the, the scale that starts on a B flat and has two flats in the key signature. If you're a treble clef uh, B flat instrument, trumpet, clarinet, tenor sax, we're now on line five with two flats in the key signature and starting on a B flat. If you're an alto saxophone, we're now on line six for you. Two flats in the key signature starts on a B flat. Again, we are not talking about concert pitch here. We're talking about your starting pitch on what you play. And with French horn, we're moving down to line four because that's the line for you that has two flats in the key signature and starts on a B flat. These are your starting pitch scales. This is probably the most confusing one I'm gonna talk about because I'm not talking about your concert B flat scale, your concert B flat scale is everybody playing line three. But your B flat scale, horns, is line four. Your B flat scale, alto saxophones, is line six. 
your B flat scale trumpets, clarinets, tenors is line five. And of course, for our C concert instruments, the concert pitch and the actual one are the same one, line three. We got two flats in the key signature. A flat on this third line in the treble clef is what we're looking at right now. Tells us that all the Bs are B flats. And this lets us know that all the E's are E flats. Cool, let's double check that. The B flat scale, B flat and E flat, sure enough. So let's go through here. I'm gonna mark all the B's as B flats and all the E's as E flats. And you're doing this right along with me, of course. I'm gonna go back for a second to the C scale. Um, everything's natural in this. All natural, organic, farm-raised, cage-free, natural. If that's weird for you, if you have a tendency to forget about B naturals in this, I would go ahead and mark all the Bs with a little natural sign so that you don't mess that up. With 12 scales and 12 different key signatures, your memory will be not useful. Your pencil will be incredibly useful. Um, so forget the fact that I'm making this an assignment that I'm gonna grade. It's just a good idea to mark this up, to send your brain that signal. You look at this key signature at the beginning and then you get to this and you your instinct, if you're a, especially if you're a C instrument, is gonna be to play a B flat. So this natural sends a signal to your brain to remind you. Um, I highly recommend doing this, but in this case, it's a requirement because this is an actual graded assignment. Um, moving on, we're gonna add another flat to the key signature. And here we've got the, th the whichever scale for you has three flats in the key signature. For C instruments, that's your line four. For clarinet, trumpet, trombone, and tenor sax, the B flat family, that's your line six. For alto saxophones, you gotta flip the page. It's your line seven. For horns, it's line five, right? Again, we are now talking about the scale that has three flats in the key signature and starts on an E flat. Three flats in the key signature, B flat, E flat, and A flat. Please don't be confused if you play anything other than flute, oboe, or percussion that I'm looking at. The, it, it, whether it's treble clef, bass clef, or which line we're on, the things I'm talking about are the same. Three flats. Three flats. B flat, E flat, and A flat. So now I go to line four. It starts on an E flat, so I'm going to put my reminder flat right there. E flat, F, G going to reminder A flat right there and reminder B flat right there. Lots of writing. As we go on, there's going to be a lot more writing to do. E flats, E flat, B, C, B flat, A flat, and then of course ending on an E flat. So important to do this because an E flat is a completely different note than an E natural. So you got to play it right. And this key signature, again, it's neat that it's there. It tells you right there what, what we're going to play throughout the whole thing. But our memories are so bad that we might forget by the time we get to hear what this even said. So marking this in our music sets us up to be successful and sets us up to not waste time. Practicing these scales incorrectly would be disastrous and so counterproductive. You'd be so frustrated. I played this all night. Like if we go into the next one, line five, that has uh, for line five for uh, C instruments, has four flats in the key signature. B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. You spend your time practicing that with D naturals the whole time, and you learn it, and you maybe even memorize it, but you memorized it with a D natural. That means you did it wrong. You just wasted your time practicing because you ingrained something incorrect. This is magical. It will save you so much time 
and stop you trying to get your memory to remember 12 different key signatures while you're working on this. These scales are part of the benchmarks for a seventh grader and an eighth grader. And these scales are part of the audition requirements for the KC Metro Honor Band. And these scales are part of the audition requirements when you go on to high school. And these scales are the building blocks of music as we know it. A musician knows their scales. We will go over them in class, but I see you twice a week. You have to do this. And I'm not there at home to say, oops, you played note four wrong, it was supposed to be flat. Oops, you played note four wrong, it was supposed to be flat. Oops, you played note four wrong, it was supposed to be flat. You will have this here. And then, of course, you've got your answer key. The back of your book, when you say, all right, well, I know that that's supposed to be a D flat, but how am I supposed to play it? All right, let's go on. We're going to do uh, scale, uh, the scale with four flats in it. The scale with four flats in it. That's the one, uh, again, with four flats. At this point, that's what you're looking for. Okay, again, I'm going to stick with this piece of paper, but you know how to find the scale that has four flats in it because it'll be the one with four flats in it. B flat, E flat, A flat, D is in dog flat. Again, this B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat tells us. Scale starts on an A, except no, it doesn't. It starts on an A flat. A flat, B flat, D flat, E flat. And of course it shows up there again. The name of the scale is an A flat. A flat, G, F, E flat, D flat. Keep your markings small but clear. You might even choose to do something like this. I'm gonna go on and jump right on to the next one with six flats in the key signature. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. D flat, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. It tells you right there. So if even reading this scale when we get to that is tricky for you, you could try just reading the letter names and knowing how to play it. You might choose to do something different like this. I've got the, the, the numbers above, above the scale right here, but maybe uh, this is a D flat scale. Maybe that is enough. D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, and of course ends on a D flat. Maybe that works for you. Doesn't work for me. I want it right next to the note. But I'm not judging if you place yours and do yours exactly like mine. I'm gonna judge on the results. Did you mark your music in such a way that you can play it successfully? Because the assignment isn't really marking. That's the means to the end of the real goal of being able to play your scales well. Okay? So you continue on with the rest of line six, marking all the flats in. I'm gonna go ahead to uh, page seven, or line seven, which now has six flats in it. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. C flat? C flat, what is a C flat? Well, we know a C flat must be a half step lower than C. Where's C flat? Where is C flat? It's not in here. C flat is a half step below C. So C flat is simply a B natural by a different name. <gasps> Imposter. So again, we'd go through this and uh, you'd mark it up starting on the note G flat. It's a G flat scale, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, G flat. Everything in this is flat except for the F. Everything, every note is flat except for the F. How do you wanna mark that? You go ahead. I'm gonna, we're, uh, we're coming up on 20 minutes here, so I know that's a long time to sit and listen uh, to me and do this video. So I wanna skip ahead and do uh, a different one. You're gonna do all of these. 
you're going to do the rest of these according to what I just taught you. Uh, I'm going to do the scale that has, um, let's do the one, I'm going to do the one that has three sharps in it. I'm going to do that one with you. And then you go on and do the ones with one sharp, two sharp, four sharp, and five sharp. Uh, but I'm going to do the three sharp scale. So just find the one on your on your page, the scale that has three sharps in the key signature. Again, don't care if it's bass clef, doesn't matter if it's line 10, because it's only line 10 for the C instruments. Three sharps in the key signature. And what note does it start on? It starts on an A. We've got our three sharps. That's on the F sharp line, the C sharp space, and the G sharp space. Three sharps starting on an A. Here we go. Three sharps, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Well, I don't remember how to play a G sharp. Cool. Look it up. G sharp. Same as an A flat, just in, if you need to try to remember that. This is, if you don't get, like you don't fully understand what I'm having you do right now, that's okay. Just do it. Just do what I'm telling you to do. If you have questions, like I basically did one through, I did six of them with you. I did from, I did no flat, one flat, two flat, three flat, four flat, and five flat. I did all those with you. I didn't do the six flat one with you. I'm expecting you to do that on your own. And of the remaining five of all the ones with sharps in it, I'm only doing one of them with you. You're supposed to do the rest on your own. If you have questions about it, you should ask me or ask each other, ask especially somebody who plays the same thing you play, or at least in the same family. A clarinet player could ask a clarinet player or a trumpet player or a tenor sax player. Anyway, enough jib jab. Here we are. This has F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So I go through the scale. A, B, C, C sharp. D, E, F. That's an F sharp. G sharp. A. Coming back down, G sharp. F sharp. E, D, C, that's a C sharp, B, A. And of course, this is a B natural. Again, if that's something that's tricky for you, you might want to remind yourself that it's a B natural. Okay, so the rest of your assignment for this first time through is to go through the rest of these scales and add in the sharps according to what it tells you. You're not sure, like uh, you're bad at reading music, Okay, well this has four sharps in it. Starts on an E, or just even, it has four sharps. Here, great, it has four sharps in it. Four sharps. That'll tell you the first note is E. The second note is F sharp. So use this to help you with this. If you're like, I don't, these notes, I still like, I went to, I, I never learned to read music. I've been faking Mr. Dragon out for two or three years. I went to another school. I don't know how to read music. Well, you can find this. You can see that this has two sharps. You go to this chart, see that that has two sharps. One, two, three. You know the third note should be marked with a sharp. Four, five, six, seven. The seventh note should be marked with a sharp. So even if you can't read music, you can follow this. You can follow this diagram. It tells you exactly what to do. So using what I've shown you and done half of them for you and with you, and actually more than half, I want you to do the rest of these. Definitely use a pencil because in case you mess up, you have an eraser, okay? So this is part one of the assignment that you do the front and back of the first page, numbering everything one through eight, and marking things according to your key signature. You definitely should have done six of them because I did, uh, and parts of other ones. If you have questions, ask. I will help. But you know our time in class is very limited. We might have better luck asking somebody else from the class to help you. This should be done by the next time you come to class.
and I will make a second video later going over how to do this page, this page, and this page. If you feel like you know what you're doing and want to get started on that stuff, go right ahead. But otherwise, I'm going to cover that in a second video. You guys are awesome. Band kids are the best kids. And uh, good luck to you. And keep playing your instrument.